Okay guys, so to wrap this video up, I really don't think this cursed episode of this show was real. It's obviously just a really good scary fan animation, and the fact that the creators behind it didn't come out and claim ownership of it sooner, allowing it to be reposted and re-uploaded so many times, is really what got people thinking was legit. That being said, it's still a good attempt at what a cursed lost episode would look like, so shout out to those animators, man. Anyway, I've been the Goat Hellholder 98 be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel down below, and hey, if you know about any more lost media you want me to cover, leave it in the comments and I'll check it out. Now be sure to follow my socials at hellholder98, I go live most days and post updates about new videos on my story, so go check it out. Alright, until then, I'll see you somewhere down the line. The moment his finger pushed the button to stop the camera recording, the practiced false smile dropped from Holden's face. It was hard not to feel down after he'd finished filming a new video, not thanks to any post-creativity slump, but the more depressing knowledge of just how much of an uphill battle this whole thing was. It felt like yesterday when Holden had first gotten into the creepier side of the internet. He never ventured into anything illicit or outright illegal, mind you, but there was a distinct corner of the web that had pulled him in when he was still at school and just starting to spend more time online. This part of the internet was filled with scary stories that were mostly fake or made up for likes, but that could have been real. There were unsettling animations, short clips that were hand-drawn to give people the creeps and keep them up at night. Not to mention a whole archive of public safety announcement videos, terrifying workplace and road safety warnings that used to be broadcast on TV, and were as petrifying than the most acclaimed horror movies. Speaking of things that were broadcast to TV, that had gradually become Holden's specialty. One of his friends had sent him the link to a fictional account of someone who had supposedly uncovered an unaired episode of a Saturday morning kids cartoon, or so this person claimed anyway. They went on to describe bizarre imagery, so intense and terrifying that it was unbefitting of a show for children. Then the person who made the original post explained how they got into contact with the show's creators via email to ask them about this cursed episode. The showrunner responded stating that the episode the poster had allegedly seen didn't even exist. To Holden, it didn't matter if the story was real or not. That wasn't the point. What was far more important was that it felt real. To him, it was plausible, even possible, that there were pieces of media out there in the world that had never seen the light of day. Episodes of TV shows or entire movies that were so wild and out there that they could have been banned and buried long before the dawn of the internet, wherein there was a record of everything and nothing was ever really lost. The idea of uncovering those lost pieces of media became Holden's primary hobby. He'd come home from school, throw his backpack onto his bed, and then sit in front of his computer for hours without even changing out of the clothes he had been wearing all day in class. But all the time he spent trawling through forum threads, following and messaging collectors on social media, listening to theories and coming up with his own, eventually it began to encroach on other things. Much to his mom's disappointment, Holden's grades took a rapid decline, and it wasn't long before he was failing his classes bad enough to not make the cut to continue on at school. But as much as it upset his mother, Holden really didn't mind. He was already thinking way beyond high school, and he knew he didn't need grades to be able to do the one thing he wanted to do with his life. Holden set up his own channel, with the plan to start uploading videos under his new online alter ego. And before long, Hell Holder 98 was born. He centered his whole internet persona around lost media, discussing which popular rumors were true and which were fictionalized for likes and clicks. It started out with a few discussion videos, where he would simply sit in his bedroom, a camcorder opposite him as he spoke. But before long, Holden was adding more and more flair to his content, learning how to edit on his computer, adding clips or screenshots he could find of supposed lost TV episodes to give his videos some credibility, a very necessary quality when trying to determine if certain things were real or not. Each video he finished, he had another two topics to a list of ideas he kept, planning to just perpetually churn out content until he eventually had a huge hit that went viral. Although the one thing he didn't realize until it was perhaps too late was that social media success didn't happen overnight. In fact, it didn't happen over many, many nights either. No matter how often Holden promoted his channel on his social media profiles, or how many new videos he uploaded, he couldn't seem to get any to land well and get boosted by the algorithm. At least that's one of the things he attributed the problem to. He pointed the finger of blame at anything that he could, 
One day, it was that the algorithm was suppressing his channel and boosting others who had already got more subscribers. The next, it might be his slow internet connection had led to one of his videos going live at a time when the site had low traffic. The one possibility that Holden didn't stop to consider was that maybe his genre of content was too niche, or that the days of the internet's interest in lost media had already peaked back when he was still in high school. Nevertheless, he kept trying, making content day in and day out, working under the assumption that if he just made enough videos, then one day he was sure to blow up. That would be his big break, his ultimate win, a video that did well enough to garner thousands, if not millions, of views. But the more time he devoted to Hal Holder 98, the only number that seemed to be at all increasing was the number of videos he had posted, each one barely garnering view figures that were above a single digit. To make matters worse, getting help with growing his online brand was next to impossible. Every now and then, he would post on forums asking for advice, or if anyone wanted to collaborate so he could gain some exposure from creators with bigger followings. Those posts were often met with a slew of apathetic, snide responses, or comments telling Holden to just, quote, make better content, as if that was solid, specific advice. On top of that, his mom had outright refused to support her son's chosen career path, citing his failure at school as the main reason. Speaking of, any friends Holden previously had at school had all moved away in the years since, going off to pursue college and other higher education. Some were even starting their new and exciting professions. The old saying said, it's lonely at the top, but Holden was just as lonely down at the bottom, posting his content in total obscurity, as if he was just shouting into an empty void with no one around to hear. The few people Holden did still consider his friends were all as chronically online as he was, most of them fellow lost media collectors. After interacting with them in the common threads of various forums, the handful of like-minded guys were as close as Holden had to people actively supporting his channel. The collectors would usually give him pointers or topics to discuss in videos and contributing to the single-digit view count underneath his uploads. Although to him, it wasn't nearly enough. He didn't want just his friends to see his videos. He wanted an audience, a fan base of his own. It was late, the light of the computer monitor illuminating the dark of Holden's bedroom. Hunched over his desk, he was clicking and dragging clips into the timeline of a video project, trimming them down to make the whole thing better paced, snipping out bad takes where he stumbled over his words or misspoke. It was while editing that Holden noticed another screen lighting up on his desk, accompanied by a vibration, his phone. He reached for it, seeing a notification popped up on the lock screen. It was from Goth, one of the lost media collectors, and it read, Dude, urgent, found something that you can make a video on. Holden sighed. It was late, and he was already focused on editing this current video tonight. If he got it finished, then he could go to sleep. What do you know about the Deathly videotape? Goth asked in a second message, before Holden even had a chance to open it first. The what? He replied bluntly, before sending another text saying, Can't this wait until the morning? I'm trying to edit. If you don't act fast, it'll be gone forever, came the response only a second later, followed by a link. Lethargically, Holden tapped the hyperlink Goth had sent, his phone opening up its browser and displaying the web page. It was a buy and sell website. One of those places where people offloaded junk they didn't want anymore to strangers for a bit of extra cash. The page in question showed a few grainy photos taken on a phone of a small rectangular object in someone's hand. What is that? Holden asked. It's a videotape, bonehead. Goth fired back. Although they'd never met in person, Holden always got the sense his friend was a little older than he was. Looking back on the seller's ad, it was for a second-hand Sony Color Collection 60-90 to minute mini-DV videotape, a type of cassette used in a lot of old handheld recording cameras. So what? Holden asked in another text. Look, there have been rumors for ages about something called the Deathly Videotape, Goth replied in a series of rapid-fire messages. It used to be all the rage on a lot of old lost media forums, the real nasty ones before they got shut down. Supposedly, there's a recording on this tape of some kind of live show, Except when you put in your VCR and press play, you see something horrible. Nobody even knows if it's real or just a legend. How do you know this is the same tape? Holden queried. By now, he had typed out the same link on his computer and was looking at the for sale page on the bigger screen while he texted back and forth with Goth. Read the item description, he answered. Holden's eyes scanned down the page, finding a short message from the seller. To anyone interested, I'm giving this old mini DV tape away. I don't know where I got it or why I watched it, but I wish I hadn't. It had ruined everything for me. It's impossible to enjoy anything else now that I've seen what's on it. 
Let me make this clear, I am not selling this tape. I'm giving it away free of charge. I hope that getting rid of it will help. Sounds ominous, Holden texted. If you're so sure if this is the Deathly videotape, then why don't you get it? Keep reading, Goth responded. Underneath the item description was another note that the seller had written. Please note, I am unable to leave my town at present, nor can I mail this tape to anyone even if you pay postage. Collection only. If you're interested, please contact me at the following address. Below was an address. It was in Holden's hometown, only a few streets away from where he and his mom lived. This could be it, dude. Came another slew of messages from Goth. You buy this tape and make a video recording, then you might finally go viral. But you better be quick before someone goes and picks it up thinking it's just an ordinary tape. Holden looks back at the address, double-checking where it was. At most, it'd take a quick walk there and back, he thought. And if this tape was as elusive as Goth said it was, then owning it would mean Holden would be the only one who could make a video featuring it. After messaging the seller the night before, Holden found himself rushing through his quiet neighborhood to the address. All night as he tried to sleep, he kept thinking of the video he was going to make, how it could finally put him on the map, and at long last, bring him the e-fame he'd been working towards. Wrapping his knuckles against the front door, he was met by an older man who stood on the other side. He was walking with a crutch, with a few bruises and stitched up cuts on his face. The second that Holden explained he was there for the tape, the man reached to an unseen shelf just inside the doorframe and thrust the rectangular cassette into his hands before shutting the door as quickly as he could without it hitting Holden square in the face. He stared at the tape in his hands, though through its transparent green plastic case, he could see a hand-scrawled note. I know you'll ignore me if I tell you not to watch this, it read. So if you do, then on your own head be it. Having spent the rest of the day looking up exactly what he'd need to play such an old outmoded recording format and convert the footage to digital so he could include it in his video, Holden had retrieved his mom's old VHS player from the attic, wiping the thick layer of dust off of it. It took a while for him to get everything ready to go, not just finding the right adapters and cables to hook the VCR up to his TV, as well as linking that to his computer, plus angling his camera right, and making sure the ring light he'd bought for filming was putting enough focus on his face. After the substantial prep, Holden took a deep breath, summoning up the faux excitement and staged smile before he hit the record button on his camera. What's up guys, it's Hellholder98 here. Now today I've got a real treat for you all. So my friend Goth, shout out to him, told me that a while ago, there was talk about something called the Deathly Videotape. We found a mini DV tape that we think might be that very same tape, so we're gonna watch it and see if it's legit. Dropping his persona as his face turned away from the camera, Holden punched the play button on the VHS player, his eyes glued to the TV screen as the camera's lens was fixated on him. Okay, nothing so far, he observed, met with nothing but a blank, black screen. Suddenly, after 12 seconds of nothing, the playback started instantly, and Holden started relaying what he was seeing on the tape to the camera. There was no sound, either because the recording on the videotape was filmed that way, or Holden had improperly figured out how to hook it up to the VHS. The video itself showed a recording of Sesame Street Live, and for the most part just seemed pretty underwhelming. Characters were up on stage, their puppeteers managing to stay out of sight as they entertained their young audience. After two and a half minutes, Holden was starting to feel like he'd gone to all this effort over what seemed to just be someone's old, unwanted home video. Just as he was considering turning off the camera and throwing the videotape in the trash, at almost the three-minute mark, something weird started happening on the stage. The actor playing one of the bigger characters seemed to be having some trouble, instantly trying to pull off his cumbersome costume, much to the distress of the kids in the audience looking on in horror. But it wasn't just the illusion that had been broken. The actor was trying to get out of his costume because he was choking. He dropped to his knees on stage, clawing at his own throat before finally falling face down, totally still, asphyxiated, dead. Over the next almost 20 seconds, the same thing started happening to another three of the characters on stage all of them violently choking while the children in the audience screamed and cried silently on the inaudible tape. Then, at three and a half minutes, the video cut out. Holden was unsure how to react, at first a little creeped out, only to be somewhat bemused. He played it down for the camera, remarking that the video seemed tame compared to some of the more graphic fake content he'd seen. But the whole time, even after rapping, recording, sitting awake all night to edit his reaction video, blurring out the parts that would break the terms of service, he had no idea what he'd seen was actually real or not. Finishing the final edit just as the sun was coming up, 
Holden hit upload and crawled into bed while his video was uploaded. The buzz of a text message from Goth awoke him. Dude, I told you this video was going to make it big. Without even replying, Holden booted up his computer and opened the page for his newly uploaded video. The view count was already in the thousands and climbing, comments pouring in underneath, mostly from people debating whether or not the contents of the tape had been faked. Holden punched the air in excitement. He'd finally done it. But as the video kept playing, he heard a retching sound coming from the computer's speakers. He turned to look back at his earlier self, filmed only the night before. Except what he was seeing play out on screen now wasn't what he remembered happening last night. It couldn't have, because the Holden in that video was choking. That wasn't possible. He was alive and watching his own video right now. But somehow the footage was shown him dying, his airway blocked, face turning red, then blue as tears streamed down his cheeks. In the video, Hellholder98 fell down, dead from asphyxiation, and watching it made Holden feel sick. To make matters worse, none of the comments under the video seemed to have witnessed the same ending. Holden even texts Goth to ask if the same thing had happened, but he described the ending exactly as Holden remembered filming it. But afterwards, it didn't stop happening. Everything he watched ended the same. Every clip online, every TV show, every movie. Holden couldn't even read a book without some characters, fictional or otherwise, keeling over and choking to death, just like the characters on the tape. He barely had time to acknowledge the hits his reaction to the deathly videotape were getting. He was too busy trying to figure out why he couldn't stop seeing people dying the exact same way, even himself when he watched back his old Hellholder 98 videos. Reacting to the deathly videotape garnered a respectable 3 million views, but Hellholder 98 never uploaded again afterwards. His channel went silent, remembered only as a one-hit wonder, until the video and the entire channel were taken down. Holden was never reported missing. The Foundation made sure of that when they came by to collect SCP-583 and place the videotape into containment. Now, if you're still in the mood for some lost media that you might not want to watch alone, then you should go and check out SCP-1733 Season Opener. Or if you like your TV game shows to be a little too real and a lot deadlier, why not grab the remote and hit play on SCP-024, The Announcer.